Welcome to King David Ministries with Reverend Eddie Royal Sr. Here is Reverend Royal. Well, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord, he has made. I will, and you should always, I said always, I said always, rejoice and be glad in it. Reverend, you shouldn't say that. Yes, I shouldn't say that. Even in the midst of, if there is anything, you know, again, as I've said before, but I'm a Christian. You may be a Christian, but that doesn't mean you have to be going through something every time somebody sees you. But there are reasons for it as well. And actually, spiritual laws and satanic forces that are involved. Also, the Word of God plainly tells us that the carnal mind is death. And the spiritual mind is life and peace. So, why not nothing be happening? Of course things are going to come your way. The Word says, even says, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trials. This is in First Peter which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you is going to happen. However, I found out, I said I found out, when that happens, are you standing on faith or fear? Because actions, you know, in a crisis, I've heard it before, when one is in a crisis, or going through a crisis, we'll find out what you believe. I said, we'll find out what you believe. And I really think for many years that we have, I, I, I don't know, the, the word says in, four, in uh, Corinthians 4.4 4, that the God of this world has blinded the mind. And I've had experience with that being reading this word and then in my experience seeing how things happen around that. As I said before, briefly, as I said the other day, I needed to have a letter. I thought. But anyway, when I got where I was going, I didn't have it. Okay. We went back to the house and couldn't find it. So I went back, and they said, well, it's Roy, you really don't have, you got this, so we'll go with that. The next morning, I looked right down where I was standing, and there it was, blinded to mine. Things happen, but it's not from God. The Word of God said, life and peace. He said, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any praiseworthy, think on these things. And I think in these last, of the last days, this is where we're going to have to get to. Because as I said before, as we teach or preach or whatever we do, especially for the people that are getting ready to come into the church, that's been on the streets for 10, 15, 20 years um, have gone through some. There's a lot of mental illness in there. I've seen it. I, you know, I worked out in downtown. These are things that the church, the body of Christ, is going to have to address as they come. And again, not brow bashing any pastor, preacher, to, not doing it. What I'm saying is I know both sides, as many of you probably know both sides. So therefore, when that person comes in, after been on the street, been on the drug, been on alcohol for 20, 30 years, they can't be ministered to the way you get up there and, and then no, they have to be individualized. Huh? Because they're coming in seeking. They've been doing other things that, and, they, and they stopped working. I know that for a fact. Cause I got tired of doing what I was doing. Hmm? But it was on me. We need to tell them that. God gonna deliver you. No. You already delivered. The works was finished before the foundation of the work. It's up to you. And that's what you, Pastor, gotta tell them. That's what I gotta tell them. Well, I didn't you know. Wait a minute. It's all done. However, 
It's on you first because we are people of will as the Father. And that means it's on you. Therefore, giving them the Word of God. That, that you know, you have to get it in them. Here's another thing. You can preach or teach it, but do they understand it? That's the question. We can preach it. We can teach it. But does the individuals understand it? Get wisdom, get knowledge, but they also get understanding. Do they understand it? And to execute it. Okay. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Okay. That word has got to be working. Therefore, first of all, I got to know that I got armor. I didn't know that either. And you look at Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. I didn't know we had any armor. I didn't, I didn't hear none of this. Okay. This needs to be taught. This needs to be taught. They need to know. They need to know about their armor. Amen. And they need to know how to walk in faith. We walk by the word. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word and not by the senses. I call faith as a sixth sense. I want to get into something. We started, we talked about it on yesterday on the live stream. But I think it, in this setting, it would behoove us to just take a look at it a little bit. About being, um, you know, Jesus said something. Let me get into this. First, let's get into the word. Ephesians, I am not Ephesians. Psalms chapter. Psalms are not chapters, I'm sorry. Psalms 112, starting at verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. Father, we thank you for the word. The anointing that is on the word. We thank you, Father God, that my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Father God, you know who's out there. I don't. Father God, if they need to be saved, Father, I thank you that they will be saved according to Romans. And God will give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, we want, prior to doing this, we want to wish all the mothers out there. <laughs> and I heard a preacher years and years ago. Uh, he said, in that church, if you didn't have a, a, a child, they call you mothers in Zion. So, if you're a mother, a mother in Zion, amen, in, in the church, we wish you a happy Mother's Day. If I was going to preach, I'd preach about a mother's love because I know about that. Amen. A mother's love, man. My mother is going to be with the Lord. Amen. But even when I was strung out on that crack, her comforting words, sometimes she would embrace me. Amen. Say, is that all right? Come on, baby. Amen. I missed that. And during that time, basically, she was the only one that would not turn her back on me. That's because I was a son. She could have, even though I was a son. But she didn't. And I missed that. And one day I'll see her again. But right now, the Lord's business has to be taken care of. And I looked up a, 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 at a scripture. And... and I thought about the scripture in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. First of all, let's just read that one verse, 46. But why do you call me Lord? Lord, and do not do the things which I say. 
Why do Jesus is talking? Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things which I say. 47. Now watch this. Keep that verse in mind. 47. Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. 48. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation of the rock on the rock. And when the floods arose and the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded, glory to God, on a rock. This is Jesus speaking. Your Lord, my Lord. But, I said but. That's what this say here. He who hear, he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth. Without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Now, Jesus said, why don't we do? He was talking to them. But the word is forever suddenly in heaven. Why don't you call me Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And but you, you, you're not doing what I get. And remember, when a preacher preaches, it goes to them first. Oh, yeah. It goes to them first. You didn't do what I say. But let me liken you to when you hear my words. Because when, remember that other verse? Don't think it's strange. Listen. When situations and circumstances come against you. Hmm? Jesus just said, and as Timothy Chandler said, I'm going to read it for yourself. Again, repeat. Read it for yourself. Remember, when a preacher preaches, number one, it, it, something got to click, something got to break. This is the anointing on that word. Huh, it cuts to and fro. It ain't entertainment. It, it, it's, 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 it's something that's going to shake me to be a better person tomorrow than I was today. This word is for the living. Ain't no Bible study in heaven. So he said, if you heard my word, what does he say? Be a doer of the word and a hearer only. If you heard my word, when all this broke loose against you, because Satan is the god of this world, and you know he hates Christians, I gave you a, um, a scripture, Daniel 7, 25, when it talks about, amen, about Satan after the saints, I, I've been telling you that all the time, and I have reference scriptures that I'm looking at. That his target is mainly the, 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 the baptized believer, the body of Christ. Why? Because many, why would God put in there the kernel mind is death? Somewhere, somehow, we came down from spiritual to kernel, even being born again. And like I said before, the devil will get you. You might well tell him. The devil will get you even in the church. You can be right up under the preacher. Still get you. That is view on no principles. The Bible is made up. Has talk about spiritual laws. There are laws in this. What did Joshua say? He told uh, Joshua, this book of the law. You ain't praying with me. It's a law. There are spiritual laws. I said there are laws, spiritual laws that we must walk in. Why over 6,000 years, I believe, that God would put this in this binder for us to, to live by, and we don't. You call me Lord, but you don't do what I say. Huh? Then he said, 
all this has come on you, that will come upon you, if you are founded on that word, if you are founded on the rock, yes, it's going to shake. Yes, it's going to come against you. Yes, you're going to, your body's going to be attacked. Yes, your finance is going to be attacked. But if you're founded on my word, you'll get through it. And what it happened to Job, he got back twice out of all he went through. He got back twice as much as he had before. There's rewards to that. But you got to stay. You see, when you've done all this thing. But if you don't hear my words. Now, there is the question. When the rains ascended and the flood comes, your house fell. My house fell. Hmm? What happened? Because you didn't hear. I didn't hear. Something happened where it didn't penetrate. Huh? He said, the word preached did not profit them, according to Hebrews 4, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So it fell, so somewhere, this book is written to the born again believer. So when it fell, somewhere, and it was not God's will, and nobody can tell you that. Better not tell you that it was not his will. Jesus just said, if you hear my hear my words, when it comes, you'll stand. But if you don't hear somewhere it didn't penetrate. Okay. So somewhere it didn't it, it didn't penetrate. So Jesus, our Lord, and I say, the one that we are supposed to obey, came in first. He said, and the word according to John 1:14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. A amen. Now, he talks about, now he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Well, who are the kings that he's that he's the king over? If you look at 1 Peter 2.29, it talks about that. If you even go, you go to Revelations, it talks about it. I don't have time. Revelations chapter 1, verse 6. He has made us to be a kingdom priest to God and Father. To him be the glory and honor. Matthew 16, just say 18. And I am also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I'll build another church. Now here's what I'm, on that scripture, here's what I'm saying. He said, my church. Not ours, ours. No, his. Now. So since it's his and he's the Lord of the Lords and we are the Lords under him. Sure, it's quiet in here because the word even said he's the firstborn of many brethren. Us. Hmm? You got to be a king and a priest. Huh? And even in Colossians 1.8. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn. I said first born from the dead and we behind it but he was the first born he had to go through everything he has the word said he has the preeminence now in Philippians 2 8 and being found in appearance as a man Remember what we said in our study before? Jesus came to about seven other scriptures. I said, he said, son of man. Even though he was a son of God, he was a son of man. He came here to show us how to do it. And it says here, it being an appearance as he humbled himself. Just about that time. He, I said, he humbled. He said, he's a man just like me. Did you hear me? He was a man just like me. I can only put me in it. He left all this dear to there. The only thing he didn't have like me was the seed of a man. Because he had to use that to stay alive. Because, you know, because he didn't have a seed of a man. Death had no claim on it. In order to get us out of this stuff. But everything else that, that we have to do, he had to do. Everything. Everything. 
Now, and it also said in Luke 10, 19, for the son of unworthy, well, that was his mission, to seek and to save that which is, was rather lost. And now what did God do? John 13, 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from some, watch this, watch this. Now, now wow, wow. Let me go back to Matthew 2018, pastors. I've used this before. Don't, don't get mad. Please. If, I'm, if, if, if it's in the word, why well, get mad? This is what Jesus, our, our Savior said. Jesus did. Jesus in um, Matthew 8, 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served. Did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. He said he didn't come to be served. So I didn't say everybody. I, but what I'm saying, I've, I've, I've lived, I've seen, and I've lived. Narcissism and everything, people want to be looked up to. And everything. No, Jesus never did that. He never did that. He said, I come to serve. He even said, let the greatest among you, let him be your servant. That means maybe coming out that pulpit. Going out there. Laying hands on them crack addicts and stuff out in front of the church. <clears throat> then, now watch this. Your Savior. He, he said in John 13, oh, no, John 13, 3. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things unto him, in, into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from the supper and laid aside his garment, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. The Son of God, the Son of Man, God it, took himself. God in himself. Where is to be? Jesus is our perfect example. And wiped his disciples' feet and took the towel. Cleaned it off. I've done that once. He said he didn't come to serve, but to be served. And he humbled himself. I'm not just about on the time. But listen, are we obeying? And I've learned in, in the last month or so since I've been dealing with this. As I learned this and this thing came up. Even in the situations and circumstances that I had. To learn how to be obedient. Didn't I tell you something, Eddie? Then obey it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm seeing that. I know what you see. But I said, see that. Now, which one you want? Because I got a free will. Sure, it's going it's to be hard. Because the devil going to do everything. He came to keep that because you looking. Yeah, oh God. He's the author, the finisher of our faith. Watch this. If we obey, I'm just about out of time. What about Matthew 6, starting at 25, all the way down to 33, 34. Talks about... Take no thought or do not worry about tomorrow. Yet many of Christians are worry wars. Hey, my mother was one. I mean, my daddy wasn't. But watch this. You tell me what is natural to worry. But the environments and things we've been taught is natural. You know why? Because you yield to it. And Jesus just told you, take no thought or do not worry. Talking to me first. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, fight it. Cast it down. Take no thought about the I say this, stay in the moment. And the devil would and this is the this is the battleground right here. Why you obey why not obeying? Why you not obeying? He said, Don't worry. Let's take another one. Second Timothy one seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but we steeped in it. I told you don't fear. Hmm? Peter could have went down in history for all generations. 
Jesus said, he said, came on, came on, uh, walking along the water, and he said, don't be afraid. That's the first thing you say, if they, Jesus would say, or the angel would say, don't fear, don't fear, don't fear. But we speak that, I'm afraid this, I'm afraid that, I'm afraid this, I'm afraid that, I'm afraid this, I'm scared, I'm this, I'm that. Well, sorry. But Peter said, if it's you, first he said, if, yeah, Jesus said, come on. I know he's smiling. Peter got out that boat and walked on the water. But he looked at the wind. When you look at a situation and a circumstance and keep your eye on it, because the attention, the fuel of a thought is the attention. And he looked at the wind and he began to say, same thing when you raise in, 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 in a situation and circumstance, you keep looking at that situation, you're going down, you're going down. That's it. And that's what robbed Peter. What about healing? Just about out of time. Isaiah 53, 5. He who is wounded, he was wounded by transgression. He was bruised by iniquity. The chastisement of peace was on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Then you go to 1 Peter 2, 24. Who himself bore our sicknesses and our sickness kept he who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were you were you were you were here I'm sick I know things come against us I understand it but what's that word I didn't say not go to the doctor. I got a primary care, Dr. Wong. Amen. But that word say, with his stripes, I'm healed. Now, if you said that, and I'm just about to, I'm going to say one thing. Let me, let me just put it like this. Jesus came before on a fig tree to find something to eat. I'm just out of time, so I'll just paraphrase this. Wasn't nothing there. Even though he saw the he said, no man eat fruit of you again for heaven left. On the way back, the tree had withered away. He said, Master, he said, have faith in God. What is, what, here's what I'm, the attention I'm trying to get you to see. He said that and walked away because he knew what he said was going to come to pass. He said, let's go to the other side. He went to sleep in the back of the boat. Why? Because what he said, we go on the other side, and that's it. Disciples, so he said, whatsoever thing you say, believe that you say, it, what, what, what is that? Because uh, I want to quote it right. Um, believe that what you say will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say it. I'm out of time. And how many of us, you might think that, I'm catching the cold. You just caught it because you believe what you say going to come to pass. Oh, it's quiet. You know why you caught it? Instead of fighting it. Hmm? I believe I'm, I'm going to fight my cancer. I'm not an English major, but you just said mine. So it's yours. It's yours. Anyway, happy Mother's Day. Think about it. Just These scriptures, that's why I give you. Tim Chandler said, read it for yourself. Look them up. Verify me. If it's not right, see what I'm verifying while I'm looking down. Because a lot of times, like Tim Chandler said, a lot of times the preacher or whoever it is is looking at, saying that, but it may not be there. Okay? So, verify me. I gave you scriptures. Read it for yourself. Tomorrow, Mother's Day, amen, uh, Sister Geraldine Channel will be giving the Mother's Day message. Now, we'll be, be coming by 5985 West Century Boulevard. That's in the city of Austin at the Southern. That's okay. We will be back at the Columbine Barn Room on tomorrow. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Amen. And we'll see you on next time. Bye-bye.